Today we're going to take a close look at the Levopressor Pro. It's actually a pretty funny story how this uh, unit ended on my table. So a few months ago I got an email in my inbox from a company called Hue uh, telling me about a new basket they had developed with uh, IMS, the Italian uh, basket manufacturer. So the big deal was that this was a 51 millimeter basket and uh, if I was interested in uh, trying it out, maybe I could uh, test it with the Pico Presso. At first I thought it's a little bit niche to uh, do a review just of a single espresso basket, uh, but then I took a look at Hugh's website and I was kind of surprised that uh, this band also makes the Lever Presso. So I've heard about the Lever Presso before, but I never really paid that much attention because as you know, there are so many uh, manual espresso makers nowadays. But then as I looked a bit closer, I realized that the Lever Presso Pro also came with the IMS basket. So I thought that this was probably a good sign that this is a pretty serious uh, espresso brand. So I came back to the rep and said, uh, sure, I would be interested in uh, trying the basket, but uh, I might as well try the Lever Presso Pro uh, now that we're already talking. So that's the story about how it ended here on this table. I must admit, initially I was a little bit skeptical. Uh, why promote the basket instead of your flagship product? But uh, after the Lever Presso arrived and I uh, opened it from the box, I realized this is a pretty solid product. The box itself feels uh, very premium. And when you have the Lever Presso in the hand, it feels like a quite good build quality. Probably the first thing that uh, stood out to me was that it came with some uh, very hefty accessories. So uh, this uh, 51 millimeter uh, chamber combined with the leveler uh, was also included in the package that I received, as well as this uh, super sturdy uh, steel dosing funnel. So this was a pretty good sign. Next up, of course, there was the IMS basket that uh, started everything. So it looks like a real uh, IMS basket. And then there's this uh, Hue branding as well. Besides that, the basket holder just feels very sturdy. The threading to screw it in and out uh, is just uh, really well made. Uh, like the machining, you can tell it's uh, made in a good factory by people who care about quality. The body itself also feels uh, very solid. It's covered by this kind of rubber sleeve, but underneath you can tell it's just uh, sturdy uh, metal steel all the way through. The main thing that kind of weirded me out first was that it has this uh, cover here. I guess it gives it a more photogenic look but you don't really need it for anything. And I'm not really sure it does anything to uh, protect the device uh, in uh, daily use, unless you're really gonna throw it out in an irresponsible manner. Then there's the pressure gauge here. It's uh, quite small compared to what I've seen on uh, devices like the Flare and the Robot, but it's big enough to get a rough idea about where you are. So are you kind of in the right zone around uh, five to eight bars or are you a bit too low or too high? So it will give accurate feedback on that. And uh, you will also be able to tell if you're increasing pressure or you're decreasing pressure. And I think that's actually what you need to know. Whether you're exactly at six or seven bars, I think is uh, less important. Also, what stood out to me right away is that uh, this uh, pressure gauge is in the right position, unlike the robot where it's kind of on the side. Here you can actually stand above the device, apply the pressure and then look down on the gauge. So uh, that just provides a very uh, nice kind of uh, tactile feedback uh, and you feel totally in control when you're pulling the shot. Another thing I noticed right away is that the arms have a very nice polished feeling and uh, they are kind of rounded. So uh, you don't really have any pain when you are applying pressure. So that's another common complaint about the robot is that it's a little bit sharp, uh, the edges. So uh, many people end up buying some kind of special accessory to make it uh, less painful to use. But uh, you don't really have this issue with the Lever Presso. It's uh, just really well made, uh, feels nice in the hand. I should say that there are different packages when it comes to the Lever Presso. So this one here is the pro version, the most expensive one. Uh, there's also a cheaper basic one. I think uh, currently it's in its uh, third uh, iteration, uh, which has a plastic uh, brew body, 
But uh, besides that, the overall principle seems to be the same. It doesn't have any uh, pressure gauge and it seems to be a little bit more flimsy. But that one has been on the market for a few years. So the stand here is actually an extra accessory and the same goes with the funnel and the timbre. Uh, slash level I think. If you want those things, which uh, I would probably recommend, then you'd need to buy them as extra accessories or you can buy the big travel uh, kit, I think it's called, which is not that much more expensive. So I think it makes sense to go for that one rather than buying them separately. If you just go for the Lever Peso Pro without any accessories, then it comes with this uh, plastic cup uh, instead of the stand. So uh, you'll just place that one underneath and then uh, you apply pressure and brew directly into the plastic cup. It also comes with this uh, plastic tamper here. Uh, not really the nicest one, uh, but uh, it also kind of gets the job done, but uh, it definitely feels less premium. So yeah, depending on which package you're going for, whether you get the stand or not, uh, the whole Leverpresso Pro experience can feel uh, quite different. But enough talking, I think it's better to uh, brew some coffee and uh, then look at the process and uh, that will give you a better understanding of this device. First up, we're going to brew a pretty dark roast. I think uh, with a device like this that requires quite a bit of preheating, this is the easiest type of beans to use. So uh, Hugh recommends that uh, you only preheat once and I agree that is uh, sufficient if you're brewing a roast that is uh, going into the second crack. So a more traditional espresso roast. So if you do the math, uh, you add boiling water to this one uh, first time, then it will bring the temperature of the device up to, I think, 75 degrees. Uh, and then uh, when you add boiling water for the second time, then that will give you a brewing temperature around uh, 89 to 90 degrees. However, if you're brewing uh, more like light to medium roasts, then you definitely want a higher temperature. So uh, in that case, you should probably preheat a second time and then uh, that will land you around uh, 94 degrees. Uh, so uh, that should be sufficient. So first you just take it off here. Then you have the dispersion screen here. You got the basket inside the basket holder. Uh, you might as well just crack these together. And we got 15.8 grams here, which seems to be a quite good dose for the liver pressel. Of course, this is also dark roast, so it will take up a little bit more room in the basket. And now comes this uh, very beefy level out here. Very nice to use. Nice even uh, bed here. Nice to tamp in. Nice little tamp. And now the basket is pretty much prepped. If we wanted to save time, we could do the preheating while we are prepping the basket. So you just fill up the lever presso. The body fits around 150 mils of water. So I think if you just let that sit for one or two minutes, then uh, the preheating will kind of have taken place. And then when you want to take out the water, you can either just pour it out the same way it came in, or you can just lift the arms here and then it will go all the way through. So the water doesn't start to flow until the arms are out at uh, an angle. Now fold the arms back, pop in the screen here, and then screw And first we're going to brew into the plastic cup here, just so you can see how this works. So now I've added the water, I'm just going to lift up the arms and that will start to release some of the water and it will saturate the puck slowly. So there's no reason to hurry too much here. Just give it a little bit of time to start the pre-infusion and then we're just going to apply the pressure. And it's a good idea to stand up here, otherwise it can be pretty difficult. And now the pressure is building up and we're starting to get into the good espresso range here. We're around five, six bars. And on the mirror, it looks like we have some good extraction going on. And I know from experience when the arms are down in this range here, 
then you're at a more like a normale range. So let's just cut the shot at this point. And then we can just lift it up here. And then just lift this guy. Just gonna place it here for now. There's a little bit of water, but that's okay. It's espresso. It will be messy. And uh, yeah, so I gotta say the shot looks pretty damn good. Very nice crema, uh, very thick. I'm just gonna swirl it a little bit and then t have a taste. No complaints whatsoever, just um, well extracted shot. The main downside, brewing directly into a plastic cup like this, is that uh, you can't fit a scale underneath, so you will have to uh, go by uh, feeling. As for the cleaning, it's pretty simple. You just squeeze out the excess uh, water, uh, like so. Just hold it in until you see the bubbles start to forming. You can do this a few times if you want to be sure to get a really nice and dry puck. Okay, I think we're there about now. So, so unscrew and then as you can see uh, this uh, puck is just dry and ready to knock out. It came out very easily and uh, the basket is uh, almost dry and uh, ready to be used. So for the next kind of shot I want to pull, uh, I want to do something a little bit lighter. So there's something quite cool about the Levopresso and that is that uh, you are actually able to pull uh, pretty long shots like Lungos or Elan Chase. So I'm just gonna start our preheating now and then I'm gonna grind out the beans. So here I have 15.5 grams. Uh, again, a pretty good uh, sized shot for this uh, basket and this device. And I'm gonna try to pull it at a longer ratio. So uh, something like uh, one to five, one to six, that kind of LNJ Lungo style uh, shot. So another good thing about that is that uh, you don't need the highest brewing temperatures possible when you're pulling a longer ratio. So uh, again, this is something that uh, won't cause any problems with uh, this device here. So for this shot, I'm actually grinding at the same setting as I was before. But since this is a lot lighter, this roast, uh, the flow is going to be faster. So I will be brewing at a lower pressure and then I'll uh, pull the shot longer. Now, one of the main issues with the uh, Levopresso is this stand here. You can't really fit a lot of scales inside. So uh, the Tamo Black Mirror Nano that I have here doesn't fit. And I believe it's the same case with the Akaya Luna. So actually I'm gonna use this cheap uh, little um, jewelry scale I have here. And then hopefully that will do the job. So now we're gonna try to pull our long shot here. So just add water. And I like to fill on this side here. And then I'll just fill it slowly until I see the first drops coming up here on the other side. And that's around 150 mils. And yeah, there we are full. Okay. Lift up, do some light pre-infusion. The water is going in now, okay. And I'm gonna take a mirror to help myself here. And it looks pretty nice and even. There's a good flow here. And I'm at four or five bars, oh, spraying a little bit. Okay, and now I'm at 54. And now I'm gonna do something a little bit illegal. I'm gonna add some more water here. I'm gonna lift up the lever again. And now we have new brew water coming in. And then just slowly get up to my target. And now we are at 90. So that should be around a one to six ratio. And honestly, I think this Lungo looks uh, pretty damn solid. It's a nice crammer. And I think with the temperature and the pressure, uh, we were also kind of within the right range. I'm just gonna give it a little stir. I'm gonna use, since I don't have my spoon here, 
Might as well use my WDT tool. Oh man, this is... Um Mm. Quite rich, full uh, extraction, uh, but uh, still with that nuance that uh, you get with a slightly lighter rose. Um, I'm pretty happy with this. The next time I would probably use slightly hotter water, I think, due to uh, being in the studio and filming. The temperature dropped a little bit more than uh, I would have liked it to. But uh, overall, it's pretty cool that you have this ability to add even more water to the chamber and then just pull a longer shot. Overall, this is a pretty nice option to have and it's something you can't really do with uh, most other manual espresso makers. Now, let's talk a little bit about the downsides. So, as I already mentioned, the stand uh, is a little bit annoying because it's uh, very difficult to uh, fit a scale under here. As I mentioned, many of the most popular espresso scales don't really fit. Also, you have the same issue with uh, cups. So for instance, I have a few uh, cappuccino cups at home and uh, they don't really fit in between the legs here. So that is another kind of annoying thing. Also, you kind of need the stand. So if you're brewing into the plastic cup, then you won't be able to measure the scale at all. And it's not that much fun to brew into plastic cups in general. So I feel like you need a stand to get the best out of it, but this stand isn't the best one. And then you also have to consider that this is not a part of the standard package. So uh, you will have to pay, I think it's 44 US dollars uh, to get this one here. Uh, or you can opt for that bigger uh, travel kit package, I think they call it. Another small thing is that the hands can quite easily bump into the legs here. I find it difficult to find the perfect fit where you can avoid having some kind of uh, interference here. So again, that's a little bit of a downside. I did see on uh, the Leverpresso uh, Facebook group that the company is actually working on a different design for the stand, one that will allow a lot more scales to fit. So hopefully that is something they will be able to pull off and release soon. As I already mentioned, preheating is also a little bit of an issue with the, this device. However, it's not different from other manual espresso makers. This is just a part of the package if you want to get into this type of espresso. Again, depending on how you see it, the workflow might also be a bit of an issue. But uh, from my experience with uh, manual espresso makers, this one is not uh, better or worse. It's uh, pretty standard when it comes to disassembling and uh, yeah, preparing your shot. And then there's also that whole question about the different packages. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you probably will only have a really good experience if you get the big package with the stand and uh, those nice accessories. I'm not really sure I would be that into the Leverpresso if I had to brew into the plastic cup every time. I have to say, I really like the Leverpresso Pro. It's a kind of cute design and in daily use, it's just pretty nice to use. As for the quality, I think it's up there with the best of them. Probably as good as any flare product or even the robot. It also feels very consistent in daily use. Once you got the grind size right and the puck prep down, then uh, it's just a matter of pulling the shots and uh, you can get uh, very repeatable results. Using the levers just feels uh, very sturdy. This uh, walnut cracker design uh, works really well. Also that IMS basket that started everything, I think it works really well. It's just a quality basket and a good uh, platform for this kind of uh, design. So uh, obviously, with a smaller basket, uh, 51, uh, it will make it a lot easier to uh, apply the pressure compared to uh, one of those bigger 58 millimeter baskets. You can still grind pretty fine since it's an IMS basket, but uh, it just feels like uh, the right size for this device here. I think if I had to point to the main problem for Leverpresso, it's just that it's not as uh, specialized as the competition. So for instance, if you want a manual espresso maker to uh, brew all your coffee at home, 
your everyday espresso machine. I think uh, something such as the robot and the Flare 58, uh, the workflow, uh, the lack of preheating, uh, those devices are just a little bit more suited for that kind of thing. However, in the travel manual espresso maker category, we also have a lot of devices nowadays. And I feel like especially the Pico Preso kind of stands out uh, among those. It makes really solid shots and it's kind of fun to use. Uh, it's also even lighter than the Lever Preso and the price is only around half. So yeah, there's some pretty hard competition in that arena. The Lever Preso is somewhere in the middle. It's definitely more portable than the robot and it's uh, also better for daily use than the Pico Preso. But I think most uh, people, they would probably prefer a device that kind of excels in one of those uh, categories. So to wrap this up, I think the conclusion for my uh, testing period is that uh, Hue makes some uh, really solid products. The quality is really nice. And I also think the design is uh, quite pleasing. However, I think they probably need to trim their offerings a little bit uh, and then uh, design a better stand that is included in the price. And then I think they have a real killer product. Of course, there's also the basic Lever Preso, the one with the plastic uh, brew body. I haven't tried it, but the price just seems uh, super affordable. So I don't know, maybe they could make some uh, version of that with the IMS basket. Uh, and then uh, that could be a quite affordable competitor to some of those other entry level espresso makers. I would like to see that happen because overall that the walnut cracker espresso style, I like it a bit more than the pumping and the lever pulling. So it would be cool to see a really good offering in that price range. By the way, if you're still undecided about the different manual espresso makers, then I have a video of the Pico Preso here. So just click that one and then I'll see you over in that video.